I was definitely surprised with the level of professionalism that he brings to the project. He, he definitely knows what he's talking about and that was really cool to see because he's like my little brother and I don't know, it was cool. I've been helping Jack since I was six and as we've grown, we've gotten better as acting. Our guest today is a local homeschooled teenager who produced, directed, animated, and voice acted in what is, to the best of his knowledge, the first ever feature length film created using Minecraft animation. And then he and his family threw a premiere celebration at a local theater. Join us as we visit with Jack Buckley, a promising and dedicated young filmmaker. Come on. It's an action comedy uh, with some adventure. It's, it's also got some elements of fantasy and uh, like a buddy film yeah. type thing. Um, yeah. So it's got a lot of those elements. It's about this, this kid named Chris who lost his father 10 years ago uh, to this cynical warlord named Purple Swordsman. He has a friend named Milo that sort of steps in as a father figure for him. They find his father's book. First of all, he wrote all about these relics, but he also wrote how they could defeat Purple Swordsman. Mm -hmm. So they go after him, and they find out a lot of things along the way. And it, it yeah, it's, I think it's an exciting adventure. It's exciting, and it's really funny. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Their relationship <laughs> is funny. Is funny yes. You know, great humor. Um, and you, what also is really amazing is that you made this film with about up to maybe forty other people mm -hmm. that some who live in your home and <laughs> with your sisters helped you with the film mm -hmm. but also um, a friend Nicholas came on board he lives where does Nicholas live he's in Kentucky which isn't anywhere near here mm -hmm. and so you all found each other through the internet talk about the relationship and how he's been helping how he helped you with the film yeah so first and foremost he was the voice actor the one of the main voice actors he voiced purple swordsman and milo so two of the main characters yeah he was in the, the film the best guy and the worst guy <laughs> yeah right mm -hmm. um so he did that and he, he also served as sort of a mentor figure because he's 17 so mm -hmm. he's farther along in in the process of animation mostly um yeah he would help me with just like hey maybe you should do this visually or and sometimes he helped me with the story as well. Yeah, and yeah. I think he thought, there's no way you're going to finish this. <laughs> no. You know, no one did. That's, yeah. it, that's great. I'm, I don't you think know, any it's of nice us to have goals, but he would finish it. Nobody told him that at the time. <laughs> no, but no, 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 I never said that to him, to him ever. Tell no, him, no, of course. But I thought, buddy, are you serious? How in the world are you going to do this? I was kind of negative. I was like, you know, this is really, really hard. This is going to take years of work to do. Frankly, I didn't think he was going to finish it. And, you know, here it is, playing in theaters. Hello, everyone. How are y'all doing tonight? Well, 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 looks like you got my message. Time to get you out of the way once and for all. I originally started making these books called Time Raider. Uh, they had these creatures called like uh, skakes, I believe. They were like skeletons and snakes. <laughs> I had a lot of different uh, creatures in the world and I made like a bunch of different books surrounding that. At seven. And then you moved on to creating and selling video games. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I learned how to make video games through this company called Youth Digital who taught uh, courses to young kids. And in the summer of 2015, I was like, hey, I should make a game and sell it. So I, over the summer, I spent about 80 hours creating this, uh, this video game called Ultimate Night. And I sold it uh, at this Christmas bazaar at uh, my homeschool co-op, and I made like $100 off of it, so it was pretty good. <laughs> this is, and so Rocky... Yeah. When he did this, and then this became sort of a tradition, when mm -hmm. he'd release a video game, you all would have a release party, a release mm -hmm. gathering, a yeah. celebration. Mm -hmm. Talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of that originated with him. He wanted to be able to share it with all of his friends and mm -hmm. with his family and the accomplishment that he had. And he was very professional about it. He had a speech prepared. <laughs> he would come out in front and mm -hmm. explain what he did, the whole process of making it. And then he would show the game and people would get to play it and so on. So mm -hmm. that was something every time he a a achieved a goal, released a project, we would have these release parties. And that kind of was the inspiration for what we did with the film as well. He not only wanted to show the film, but he also wanted to be able to give people popcorn <laughs> and a drink mm -hmm. and, and have it, a panel turn it discussion. Into an event. Well, part of that was also related to the, the commercial aspects of Minecraft because we couldn't outright sell the film, right. sell watching the movie. Mm -hmm. So we conceived of it as an event. 
the, the kind of release parties and things that we started out doing in our living room mm -hmm. now took this leap and now, you know, but the stuff on a big the screen. The structure's yeah. the same. It's, there was yeah. always, he always talked in the beginning. We yeah. would show the thing. There was always a and a at the end. And then there was always food. So <laughs> it was this little version of it that, yeah. you know, we made bigger at the theater. Where did you get the um, introduction and the basis for the knowledge to where you are today? So for everything but animation, uh, I was mostly self-taught. Just, Just take, take my hand. hand. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I know that voice. I don't trust you, Hand, but I'll take you anyways. When you started Remnants, it was going to be 16 minutes, right? Right. And it ended up being a full feature film. So why? So, uh, basically, uh, on the, the platform I was talking about earlier, Youth Digital, mm -hmm. um, I released a 16-minute version of the animation, and it was basically the first-ish 16 minutes of the film. It's, it's completely different now but uh, got really positive feedback and everyone was like, more remnants, we need more remnants. Mm -hmm. So over the next like year or so, I created another two episodes. They were both about 15 minutes long. By the time I had done episode two, it was already going into a feature film. I already knew that it was gonna be a feature film, but I was still releasing it to please the people. Uh, please the people. On <laughs> watching, uh, watching on Youth Digital, so. Yes. Um, and that keeps you going. Right. Right, mm -hmm. the feedback keeps you going. Right. Yeah. How long did it take you to make this film? Uh, three years. Three years! Over 3,000 hours. That mm -hmm. work ethic is mm -hmm. really impressive. It really is. I mean, even from, you know, like you said, seven years old, he was writing books and completing them. And what we have noticed is his, not just his work ethic, but his, um, I guess, standards of quality. And so, he mm -hmm. discovered by the time he got to the end of the movie, his animation skills for that first episode were not as good. You know, I was saying, well, couldn't you describe it? Um, well, you can see my skills have grown as you watch the movie. And he's like, no, I don't want that. So he literally went back and reanimated the first episode at, this past spring, you know, yeah. right yeah. before he was going to release it. Yeah, I had it. to do it in 10 days. So, um, which was crazy. Yeah, like I, I bet it was but crazy, the, but I As his mom, the cutest me. part was his voice, because his voice in episode one was, you know, it like was 12. like this. It was kind of <laughs> little. Hey guys, Jack here, and today we're going to be doing a read through of Remnants. Check this out. Today we finished the screenplay. For Milo, I talk in a very similar voice. I kind of have a more higher, like, hey, so my name is Milo. For the Purple Swordsman, uh, when we first started the film, I kind of had a, hello, human. How are you today? Something like that. Then we deepen the pitch. You're weak, Jacob. An insult to the very existence of life. Oh, honey, we're finally married. Yes, honey, I love you so. Out, out, just no. Read the signs, for gosh sake. So I did the line when I was like eight, and so he told me to do like an adult voice, but since I was eight, it was pretty hard. Oh, honey, we're finally married. You're working in Minecraft. T talk about why Minecraft. So it was mostly out of necessity. For this film, I really didn't have a budget. Um, for future projects, I'm planning on having a budget. But um, for this one, Me I wasn't. Too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't able to do uh, a budget for this one, and so I just decided to go with Minecraft because it's easy. Um, to animate, I guess, uh, or it's easier than a lot of other things. But also just making the world takes a long time. Um, right, and so in Minecraft it doesn't take as long. You can yeah. use some of the worlds that are already but, there. Yeah, but as I went along I realized that um, there had never been a feature film that was made with Minecraft animation. Yeah. So then it was really exciting to uh, to see that happen. Give me an example of what you can make his face do. Totally, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on, let me let me reset the arm here. First of all, what I would do is I would keyframe, which basically means, say I put a keyframe here um, at the first frame, then I would put a keyframe here, and that's at frame 20. Um, so that's that's basically about a second, a little under a second. Um, so that if I play this, then it looks like that. The hardest part is just capturing emotion. It has to look accurate in order for it to be in the film. So if I can't make it look accurate, then I just have to keep going. Well, I love the the way you work with mannerisms and expressions and tie it in with the humor. Ooh, me elegante. When did you learn Spanish? I didn't know about that. Listen, there are a lot of things you don't know about. Okay, this is getting really cliche. Let's hit the sack. 
Don't you mean we should hit El Saco? Nope. No, I do not. One of the composers is in Louisa? Oh, Louisiana. Oh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's, again, not very close. <laughs> no. And then no. your sister wrote one of the theme songs that takes, yeah. that's, goes on in the end. End credit song. Mm -hmm. What was that like, working with your sister? It was interesting. It was also, at times, a little bit, because eh, cause I was like, I want this in the song. And she was like, well, it doesn't have to be that. <laughs> that I was like, yes, it does, Mia. <laughs> I'd never done any electronic music or EDM or anything like that. So having to do that while at the same time writing for like a character and not writing from myself and having to work with Jack. And I think it turned out really well. When I'm tired of fighting, when I'm close to giving up, I just need a helping hand to help my feet and pull me up. Where do you see yourself in the future? Um, so when, I, when I'm like, older older okay <laughs> um, I want to do uh, executive producing because it's really creative at this day and age but more more close to now uh, I'm planning on making more films and not only just um, like actually released films but watching movies and just like being more of an expert on uh, what I'm what I'm doing I am definitely <laughs> keeping an eye on you <laughs> I can't wait to see where you go thank you Jack thank you all thank you yeah. Jack did a great job on the movie I'm proud of him. He's always been really creative and just writing things and creating things and I'm excited to see what he does in the future. I want to be like you when I grow up. Um, sir, you're a senior. You're already grown up, but hey, I'll still take that as a compliment. <laughs>